Shalom and good day all, this is Tehillim29, back again for another DC comic review. And in this DC comic review, I'll be covering Dark Crisis. And uh, first things first, um, cover ratings. Uh, do these covers in any way, shape or form connect to something that's happening inside of the story? Uh, sure enough, they somewhat do. So, for the first cover, which is actually a wraparound cover, I gave a 7 out of 10. But for the variant cover, I gave a 7.5 because I actually really like seeing all the members of the Bat family together in the one. I'll now use the variant to show the internal art around the beginning, middle and end, as well as covering some of the things that are happening in relation to the story. So this is some of the art around the beginning, and as we've got here we've got someone giving us a bit of a narration I believe it's John John Samuel Ken and we can see the myriad of superheroes and their past and eventually a bit of a collection to their legacies as we start to move a little bit further in relation to the story We've got John Samuel Kent beginning to look out for people who will somewhat join his fray. And as you can see here, we actually have a number of monsters um, that are actually saying that the Dark Crisis or the Dark um, is actually... ...working its way into the DC Universe. And if it's one thing I have noticed, is that a number of these heroes that are here, even though they're hearing the monsters say this, they also seem to be ignoring it. Of course, some of the art around the middle, to which John has established his new Justice League. And I do like what they have done here, um, especially in relation to John in showing the trouble that he's getting sort of like new members to join to what would be the new Justice League and I've heard people actually criticize what Damien said too but I need to point out something all right these are the people who say yes right Damien says I support you John but my father's not dead <laughs> all right of course some of the art as we draw closer to the end and he starts to go for nightwing and we've got deathstroke getting people in his sights and last but not least we move into mariah saying and I will use the deaths of the Justice League to destroy the multiverse. Now, this is something I've been thinking about. And I'll get to it once I move into the story rating. So for the internal art, I gave a 7.5 out of 10. Now it's time to jump to the story rating. Uh, first things first, did we get any comic references? No, he didn't. What about the area of time? No, he didn't. The next thing is, what locations did we get in this story? Uh, we had Brazil. We had um, the Hall of Justice. The Titans Tower. Multiverse Issue 2. Uh, multiverse 2. Um, oh, what else was there? New York. Twitch. John went to see Jace, uh, the fraudulent Batman Fox. And the cast of characters consisting of Nightwing, Deathstroke, Wally West, Superboy, John Samuel Kent. Uh, we also had Hal Jordan, Black Adam, and I enjoyed a lot of the things that Black Adam said in this. Uh, we, of course, had Frankenstein. We had Damien Wayne Robin. And last but not least, Pariah. Now, in relation to 
what Pariah said in at the end of this. Now, there was something that happened in um, Infinite Frontier, to which we got to see something happen to Barry Allen. And it was almost like he was put into the somewhat perfect multiverse. And in fact, it was sort of like made out as a Flash universe. And in this Flash universe, um, it was almost as if uh, Barry Allen was having perfect families. Like, the perfect storytelling. And they, you do get a bit of an interruption as to what happens. So, I imagine what's happened to Barry Allen is also the same thing that has happened to the rest of the Justice League. So, they're actually being put in a universe. And I'm going to put up a bit of a theory in this is that their hope in these stories is going to rely in connection to those who would be considered the next generation to save them. And this is how I think Joshua Williamson will connect the original key characters like the Batman, Superman one, so the Superman one that Tom King is doing, um, it, it's going to be in a very similar universe to where Flash is in, along with the Green Lantern, uh, plus the others, so if anything, um, I'm going to use a bit of a Japanese term here, and this might drive you nuts, um, and the term is an infinite Tsukiyomi. So they're caught in an infinite dream state. Um, and that is actually something that's seen in Naruto and also the Baruto series. And the sea actually being brought into um, the Western comics. So... These characters being put into a dream state. So, in other words, um, even though, yes, something has happened to them, consider these characters in somewhat a bit of a coma. I think that might be the best way to put, put it. That these main heroes have been put into, say, a DC coma. But in this DC coma, they are also stuck in their own unique wor worlds, which are also, in some essence, a world of their own creation. Um, maybe even addressing things that they would have loved to have seen. Uh, another thing too is that when they do happen to see Barry Allen, it's mentioned that in this particular dream world is that it's too sensitive to interfere with so that also lays down a bit of a hint that in order for that world to change it needs to hit a few nerves to cause the change to in other words to cause these characters to awaken from their stupor or to awaken from their slumber well, until then, let's keep it colourful and have yourself an awesome day.